Hey everybody, welcome to another GMG review. Today we're taking a look at not one, not two, but three new codexes for Warhammer 40,000, starting with Codex Space Marines. Um, so as a three-part review, this is going to be the video covering Codex Space Marines. If you are interested in jumping directly to the videos for the White Scars and the Ultramarines, you can go up here in the cards, and they will be linked in the video description as well below. Um, so this is a new release plan for Space Marines. In 2017, um, we saw Codex Adeptus Astartes, or Space Marines. Ah, first of the 8th edition Space Marine Codex has come out. And now two years later, we're jumping into a brand new sort of like release plan and, um, and strategy for the Space Marine Codexes. So this is kind of a throwback for those of you that were around in 40k 3rd edition to the 3rd edition release plan for Space Marine Codexes where you, pit, you had a, a Codex Space Marines, a parent book that had all of the like Codex units basically, all the things that everyone had access to. Um, and then you had additional codexes that gave you your, your what made your chapter different. Um, and that's kind of what we've gone back to here. Now on top of that, this core book, the Space Marine Codex, um, has rules for creating your own successor chapter, which I think is the coolest part. That was a fourth edition um, Space Marine Codex thing that they've brought back in this book. And it allows you to pick various traits and attributes for your chapter, design your own Space Marine chapter. One of my favorite things to do ever in 40K is either taking a very little known Space Marine chapter and like painting up an army for it, um, which I did in second edition with my Raven Guard when there was literally nothing besides the chapter symbol for them, uh, to um, to creating the, the actual like like background rules and stuff like that. And this codex is gonna allow you to do that. Now, there are I think 10, there's like a spoiler basically with like a collection of these supplement codexes. Most of them are redacted. The two that we've seen so far, the two I have here, which is the Ultramarines and the White Scars um, codex is planned out. Now we're gonna focus on this one for now. Uh, but all you need to know is that if you're playing like just bog standard space brains out of a starter set or something like that, you, all you really need is this book. You don't have to get these unless you want to dive into either one of the first founding chapters and it feels like that's what's going to happen because there's a number, like the number of chapters in there that it, it basically corresponds with the loyalist chapters. I think it's plus one. It should be nine and nine with two redacted. Yeah, this should be nine and nine with two redacted for just like the first founding 20. So if it is 10, I might have just made a, I might have just counted wrong. But uh, <laughs> there's, either, there's either a surprise in there potentially, maybe the Black Templars get a codex. Um, one of the uh, the second founding chapters or like the um, the famous chapters that aren't the one of the first founding chapters might get a book. Um, but it does mean that throughout the release of these books, there are gonna be some chapters that might feel a little stuck. So like the Spaceless Codex only just came out this year. Um, it's my primary space brain chapter. I'm not really sure what to do with my, I, I might have missed it in my first run through of reading the book. I'm not really sure what to do with my space wolves up until then. I'm pretty sure I can just give them the space wolves tag and use that book like as normal. <laughs> I don't think there's any list of what I can and can't take anymore. So I'm pretty sure that anything that's new in this book, like for instance, all the Phobos Marines, um, the new like repulsor tanks, there's like the transport one and the big heavy laser one. I'm pretty sure I have, I have access to those if I just give them the keyword. So I'm pretty sure I'm okay, but you may feel, because you're not gonna get the, um, the standard traits and stuff in here, the doctrines and stuff out of your codex, the Blood Angels, the, um, the Dark Angels and the Space Wolves, might feel a little stuck. <laughs> I'm not really sure. There might be a, there's something to clarify in here that I missed, or there might be a future FAQ just as to how that's gonna work, but they're all very non-standard chapters anyway, so it isn't really a huge deal. That being said, I can easily see those books being redone as part of this series. So I, 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 don't, I don't think that we're gonna be like forever waiting for that to happen, but if you do have a codex in the meantime, I think there's gonna be some questions as to what to do. It might have been covered in here in like the how to make an army bit that I just missed. Um, or it might be something that GW's gonna handle in an FAQ. So let's dive in. Um, I'm not gonna spend too much time. I'm gonna do a flip through of like the background parts and the art parts because obviously they're cool and we wanna see them, but like you guys want me to get to the rules <laughs> for the most part, I'm pretty sure. Um, so this is the um, the Vigilus uh, starter set, the two player starter set. Obviously Shad Shadow Spear, Shadow Spear. I'm, there's too many shadows and strike names in, in 40K now, I can't remember what they are. But this is the Shadow Spear cover uh, as the interior graphic, which is pretty cool. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna flatten the pages. So those of you that, that are gonna find when I abuse books, you can either see the pages really well or you can um, or you can have me not abuse books, but we can't have both. And there it is in beautiful full color. 
Uh, and yeah, so so it's all back to the very beginning. You get your classic write-up of what a space marine is, where they come from, um, and of course the Horus Heresy. So here's our 20 legions, um, all of which... You know what's funny? The first time I ever saw this printed out was in the Horus Heresy um, infantry supplement for Depths Titanicus. It's the first time this was ever printed out. And if you're, you want a bit of history, um, a lot of the names for the characters, Nathaniel Garrow, uh, Saul Tarvitz, they actually come from a little block of flavor text that was printed in and around here, um, talking about the flight of the Eisenstein that's in that infantry supplement. Because that was when the Horus Heresy first got in the Lost and Damned and Slave Darkness books, is where it first started to get flushed out. And for the longest time in second edition when I made my Raven Guard army, this was literally all the information I had to go by. I knew that they were the 19th Legion, they were called the Raven Guard, uh, their Primarch was Korax, they were from Deliverance, and that they had some successor chapters, and that was it. They, they, I don't, at the time, actually, they didn't even have this part, this wasn't there, because it's just the Horus Heresy, so it's just covering what they are, and their, their, their symbol and stuff. More cool art, a lot of this is reprinted. Um, I think this is a variation of an Alex Boyd drawing that was the making of a Space Marine that I loved from the 4th Edition Codex. Alex Boyd is one of the, like, the OG, like, second wave of like grim dark artists that i just love and i don't know if this is it's funny because you can't i miss the old days where the front of the codex had like the this is the glyph for the artist you're looking at right now and all the artists got credits one of the things about making books by like, by committee where there's like departments that handle a lot of the art and departments that handle all the writing is you don't really know who's doing what and i think that's partly to do so we can't pick on them as designers and artists but at the same time i wish great new artists and great writers could get credit for what they're doing too because I basically I don't know who's doing what anymore unless I meet them and I eyeball some of their art like in an event or something like that I can't I can't tell like I can always tell John Blanche or Jess Goodwin I can't I'm not sure who this is anymore and I wish I did I wish the book still had something in there ah the tools of war the great things they have in memoriam <laughs> this is great the life of a space marine uh, how you ch organize a chapter, so this is basically the codex organization of a chapter. How their fleet works. Well, I guess battle barges still look like that. That's cool. That's cool that we've got a, a piece of battle barge art in there that is still hearkening back to um, BFG, so if they ever redo that, maybe maybe that stays the same. Uh, how your companies work. I'm just going to start skipping ahead because we're, we're looking at stuff we all know. Uh, the Awoken. Oh, this is, so we're going to the... We're going to how... So beyond the Ultima Family, so what happened during... The, when they brought out the Primaris Marines, the Big Lee Marines. So being woken up, you're basically like a, a 10,000 year old space marine. It's been in stasis forever, made by call. The Indoctrinated, the first wave of guys during the chapter, and then the Ascended, which is the people that weren't at Primaris Marines, taking the Primaris conversion, which I think is hilarious. Because that way we get Big Lee versions of everybody. And Marius Calgar finally got to not be the shortest space marine in history. Because there was a joke for a long time, he always had to stand on a rock because he was so little. <laughs> He was, he was gnome from Wildcats. Oh my God, it's an image comic from like the 90s that none of you are gonna remember. And it was terrible. It was really bad. It was a bad, a bad time for Edge Comics. All they had was Spawn. They were trying anything. Uh, someone's gonna yell at me for not liking Wildcats, but it was terrible. Gnome was basically Nick Fury, but like, he was gnome. Just let that sink in. <laughs> the Ultramarines. It's funny because it's not the Ultramarines book, but they still use them as the poster boys of like a, a codex chapter and then go through their successors. So I feel like they maybe could have taken the chance of doing somebody else. You know what I mean? Like someone else is just a codex chapter and using them in this book. And then the Ultramarines could have been, it could have all been in there. But they go through all the first founding chapters and their successors. So hooray. Stories about everybody. Did they do the space wolves in here? I can't remember. Or is it just codex chapters? It might just be codex chapters. I think it is just Codex chapters, yeah. They stick they stick it to everybody else. Salamanders, White Scars, yeah, they don't they don't do it. They don't they don't do anybody that's not a that's not a, a, a good boy. You're not a good boy. You don't follow the chapter of the codex, then you're not in this book. So the Dark Angels and the Blood Angels get get no get no love in here. Because they're not needed. <laughs> the Iron Hands are in here. Even though the Iron Hands are like one of the most divergent. They they use they have like a clan system and like they're not even remotely following it. And they do do um, a bit of unknown founding stuff. So the Blood Ravens. What do they say? Do they say who they are? They originate from an unknown founding and have an unknown gene sire. They've operated as a solely fleet-based chapter since they lost their home planet. Their own records have been expunged and no and the ones kept by the Ordi Malice sealed. Uh, there we go. No, they don't. They don't say that they're. They don't say that they're actually. Thousand Sons, but they don't not say it either. 
Exorcist, Storm Giants, White Templars, Star Dragons, Fire Lords. All oh, the Black Dragons are in here. They're the, uh, the Black Dragons are funny. They have um, arm spines. They have like dragony spines, like Grothar arms. He used to sharpen them and fight with them. That was their whole thing in uh, in third and fourth edition. And um, I'm pretty sure they were a riff on the Nietzscheans from Andromeda, which were like a. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a bad Kevin Sarbo t TV show from like the late 90s, early 2000s. And these guys called Nietzscheans who like evolved to be like a better human species, but they all had these like fighting spines growing in the back of their arms. I'm pretty sure it was an Andromeda reference. I hope it was. <laughs> it was a bad, it was a Kevin Sarbo. It was a Kevin Sarbo show that wasn't Hercules Legendary Journeys. So take that for what it will be. Fighting some Eldar, Wink the Dead cover. How to be a Space Marine Commander. How to be a Chaplain. How to be a Librarian. How to be a Tech Marine. How to be a battle line squad. Hooray. Yeah, there's more. Just stuff about dudes. Combat walkers, scouts, transport vehicles. And I will say, and this we haven't gotten to it yet, but I, I will I will quell any any fears that they've cut all the regular space marines out of here. All the regular space marine stuff's still in here. All the same. You get some of your new stuff here. So your <coughs> Bigly Transport tank. Which is like a weird open. I didn't realize it was open topped until I saw this picture. Actually, it's got like it's open. It's open at the back, basically. So it's like um, it's kind of like the Salamander transport vehicle for the Imperial Guard, where like it's it's like an open back Chimera, which I thought, always thought was cool. And then the new uh, Invictor Tactical War suit, who's got the Avatar thing going on. Uh, and then there are some new options actually for the new Eliminators to the Blast Eliminators, which are pretty cool. Because that looks like what we're getting with this codex is we're getting the plastics finally for the Eliminators. Um, the infiltrators and the like, not, not the characters. I don't think it's the it's the tank, the eliminators, the Victor War suit, and the and the basic like um, infiltrator guys. We're getting it coming in this book. Who are all super sweet? And then regular Space Marines. Look at you guys. You're still real boys. You're in there. I have to say, I wish all of the Inceptors had their like welding masks down because that is one of the coolest features of this of this like kit is they have this weird like blast helmet for like jumping through orbit or whatever it's for. And I wish that they always had those down. Uh, Redemptor Dreads, who are just a bit too tall, I think, for their body size. There's something about the distance between the bottom of the legs on this, on like the old Dreadnought and the bottom legs here. There's just too much space here. He's kind of like chicken legged, whereas this one, he feels like he feels like squat and powerful. Like he's got like a, a layer of like, I'm 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 sort of like. Um, uh, my center of gravity is is right where I feel like the center of gravity on the Redemptor Dreadnought is always a bit too high. And that is, they got bases and everything, just like real boys. So this is the old, uh, well, old. It's not that old since the new edition, but the Repulsor tank, and then your new big laser tank, and then the transport version, which again I did not realize was open topped. It's like a, it's like a weird. It has like weird super stubbers and like a baby hurricane volter and then new auto cannons. It's a weird tank. It's weird that they're going away from bolt guns for space marines. It just doesn't feel right to me. I don't know why, um, but there it is. And then more existing stuff. Remember when these were the cool new thing? Centurions? No one even talks about them anymore, but they're like, they were the original. They were the OG in Victor War suit that nobody really talks about now. Probably because they're not as good as in Victor War suits are going to be. All right, so here we go, Defenders of Mankind. We're getting into rules. We've gone through all our fluff on our pretty color pages, and we're gonna talk about rules. So, <clears throat> keywords chapter works the exact same way. Now you can, so, it, okay, it does actually say it. You cannot choose the Blood Angels, Dark Angels, Death Watch, Grey Knight, Legion of the Damned, or Spaceless keyword when nominating which chapter it's from. Rules for these chapters are detailed in other publications. So, there it is in black and white. I missed it my first skim through, but you are you don't get to use combat doctrines if you come from those books. So. Stay tuned. <laughs> you don't get any of the cool new stuff. Um, your war gear list, you got a war gear list, abilities. Common abilities, so all different strategy units should have these abilities. Angels of Death, this unit has the following abilities, they should have no fear, bolter discipline, shock assault, and combat doctrine. Now most of these have been previewed already and they should have no fear, you can reroll the dice for morale tests. Bolter discipline, if you don't move, you can shoot twice up to your full range. Uh, so if any of these are true, basically, if you didn't move, uh, if the firing, if you're within half range, if you didn't move, um, and if you um, are a Terminator, Bike, Centurion, or Dreadnought, you can just always shoot at double range. And then Shock Assault, when you charge or charge or perform a heroic intervention, you get plus one attack to all the models in this unit until the end of the turn. So that's pretty cool. You basically have old third and fourth and fifth edition charging rules where you just get plus one attack on the charge. So it makes your basic Space Marines not quite as crap in melee. Uh, and then finally, combat doctrines. Okay, so <clears throat> everyone with the Angel of Death rule gets this rule. 
Now, if you've seen the, the spoilers for these, you have a basic idea of how they work. They're basically doctrines that start at one layer. They start at the Devastator Doctrine, um, and then you can change it in later rounds, starting in round two, to one of the further down doctrines. Now, the Devastator Doctrine is the arm penetration characteristic of heavy and grenade weapons in this model is equipped with or improved by one, while the Combat Doctrine is active. So, basically, all your APs go down by one. Uh, the Tactical Doctrine, the arm penetration characteristic of rapid fire and assault weapons improves by one. And then the Assault Doctrine, the arm penetration characteristic of pistol and melee weapons that they're equipped with is improved by one while the, while the Doctrine is active. So basically your weapons get better depending upon which type of Doctrine is active and you always start at Devastator and each turn you can go down by one. So on turn two you could be at Tactical, by turn three you could be on Assault. But it means that you've got like the ability to basically scale your weapons to what you're doing the most of at any point during the game. Um, and it means that all your AP zero weapons of a given type are minus one save, and like your AP minus one ones are minus two. So think about that, like all of your bolt rifles are minus two save. Your auto bolt rifles are now minus one save during the tactical like doctrine thing. It's bananas. <laughs> that's a, that's like, that's a huge army wide buff. And it doesn't, or is it? Models this unit gain a bonus depending on if you have a battle forged army, units only benefit from this bonus if every unit from your army has this ability, excluding servant or unaligned units. Unless specif uh, specified otherwise, the bonus is not cumulative with any other rules that improve AP. So like traits and stuff like that. Uh, and that's it. Like all your units that are angels of death get this. So we're talking everything that has that rule. <laughs> Which is a lot of stuff in this army. Um, and then I'm not going to focus on anything that's that's not changed. We're going to do unit types right now. So Primaris Captain, Gravis Captain. The Primaris Captain gets the, um, where is his Power Fist upgrade that he could have for the Imperial Fists. Uh, you get your Gravis Armor, Phobos Armor. Still no ability to change any of this. Um, the Primaris Captain gets Power Sword or Power Fist and Plaza Pistol. And he can change his Bolt Rifle to a Stalker Bolt Rifle or a Bolt Rifle. Phobos Armor, again, no options. Still no options. I was so hoping that the Phobos stuff could get like multi-builds in this book. There's no options for them. Captain Terminator Armor still gets a million options. Basically, if you're an old school miniature and you can be built different ways, you have options. If you're not an old school miniature, you don't have any options to be changed. And I'm bummed about that because it means your Captain and Phobos Armor is still just fighting with a knife. Fighting with a combat knife. Cataphracty gets options. Regular Captain has a bajillion options. So Mr. Smash Captain still exists. Um, he can have, he just got better by the way, if he's at the Assault Doctrine Active, his, uh, his Thunder Hammer got real good, Mr. Smash Captain. Um, this model can have one Storm Shield instead of being equipped with a Chain Sword, so he gets a Storm Shield, and then this model can be equipped with one of the following, a Chain Sword, a Relic Blade, a weapon from the melee weapons list, and, uh, that's it. Yeah, you can still do your Smash Captains. Captain on a Bike, Lieutenants. Primaris Lieutenants, Librarian Lieutenants, Lieutenants in Phobos Armor, Warrior Options, any model here with a Heavy Bolt Pistol and Combat Knife, or one Mastercraft Oculus Bolt Rifle, one Paired Combat Blades and one Bolt Pistol if it has Smoke Grenades. So you get some options for the Phobos Lieutenant. That's cool. And if you get Smoke Grenades, it gets the Reaver keyword. It becomes a Reaver Captain, or a Reaver Lieutenant, which is neat. Excuse me, I'm getting a cold. <laughs> Primaris Librarians. Primaris Cat Chaplains, Tech Marines. Really nothing new here. Librarian Terminator Armor, Chaplain, Phobos Armor gets no options. Just gets the psychic like power choices, and that's it. What else we got? Intercessor squads, exactly the same. Sergeant can have a power for some, pretty sure. Where is he? One chain sword with one weapon from the Intercessor Sergeant's weapon. Let's stop to check that, but I'm pretty sure he can still take a power fist because the, the new upgrade squad Sprue had one, so they added it to the unit. Tax squad's the same. Infiltrator Squad, Incursor Squad. So here's something new. Um, uh, but first, before we look at that, can you do any options? No. <laughs> Infiltrator Squad gets no Sergeant options. Just the Helix Adept, and you can take a Comms Array, which is a new thing. The Comms Array does what? The Comms Array... Omni Scramblers, Concealed Positions, Helix Adept. Comms Array. Whilst this unit contains a model with an infiltrator comms array, if there are any friendly uh, Phobos captains or Phobos lieutenant models in the battlefield, the unit's always treated as being in range of their rights of battle and tactical precision abilities. Boom! That's pretty cool. So you buy them the comms array, and it doesn't matter where on the battlefield they are, they all get to reroll all their ones for for all their cool their cool aura abilities. That's that's pretty rad. I like that. Um, in Cursor Squad. Uh, so the one Incursor Sergeant and four Incursors. It can be additionally contain up to five Incursors. Each model is equipped with a Bolt Pistol, Oculus Bolt Carbine, Paired Combat Blades. They're basically a squad version of the Phobos Lieutenant. 
Um, they are, they can have a haywire mine. So they're basically just in, in like regular um, intercessors, movement six, two wounds, two attacks, leadership seven, three plus save. Um, the Oculus Bolt Carbine is the same as the one on the Lieutenant. When resolving attack by this weapon, the target does not receive the benefit of cover. So you just a rapid fire bolter. And then paired combat blades, uh, six to hit or additional hits, and that's it. But your Haywire Mine in your movement phase, uh, one model from your army with a Haywire Mine that has not been primed can prime it. At any point during that model's move, place one ha primed Haywire Mine within one inch of it, more than three inches away from any enemy models and more than six away from any other primed haywire mines. If an enemy model within three inches of the primed haywire mine, roll a six on a two plus, the enemy unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. If they're a vehicle, it suffers D3 plus one mortal wounds instead, it's removed from play. So you can drop mines next to things, uh, and then during the movement phase, is it if it moves? If that needs a vehicle. Yeah, if it moves within three. So basically, if it moves at all while it's within three of it, it's gonna take that hit. Uh, and then combat squads, concealed positions, multi-spectrum array, and these are a troop choice if you want to take them. Yeah, that's pretty cool. When resolving attack made by a ranged weapon, um, you can ignore hit roll modifiers for inbuilt skill modifiers. I think the infiltrator box might also make the incursors. I don't know that for sure though, but I, I'm, I, I haven't actually checked to see, because I just saw that the infiltrator box was coming out, but I haven't checked to see what it does yet. I wouldn't be surprised if it if it does. Okay, so I just went and looked online to see if it was something I'd missed in the pre-order list, <laughs> or like the announcements and stuff. So on Thursday at the time of me filming this, there's no mention of the incursors that I could find with a quick Google. Um, and my guess is they're equipped so similarly to the infiltrators, it might just be an alternate thing you can make out of that box. It might be something they're gonna put out later on, I don't know. There's literally no picture of them here, so I can't tell um, if they have the same bodies and stuff, but it's entirely possible. So scouts, apothecaries, primaris apothecaries, primaris ancient, company ancient, company vets, uh, ancients and terminator, terminators, cataphractes, terminator assault squads, all our, all the good stuff we've always had. Uh, Tartarus terminators, stern guard dreadnoughts, ironclad dreadnoughts. I don't know why they don't get used more. Toughness eight dreads. I mean, they're not Vendreds, they don't get a shrug, but man, they're, they're pretty cool. Time to say Dreadnoughts, pretty cool. Vendreds were awesome cool. Contemptors, Redemptors. In Victor Tactical War Suit, I, I, again, I won't know what's been spoiled and what's not been spoiled by the time this comes out, because I'm reviewing this on a Thursday for a Saturday. Um, but uh, there's his stat line. So he's um, threes across the board, movement 10, but one before he's wounded. And then he's strength seven, toughness six, 13 wounds, um, four attacks, leadership eight, three plus save. He's kind of like a, he's like a stripped down redemptor. Like his toughness is lower, because obviously he's just got this like cage. He's not actually like protected by the suit. Which again, I mean, he's just a, he's like a, he's like a servitor for a space marine, or not a servitor, um, um, a, uh, what are they called? The walkers for the, uh, the, uh, Sentinels. It's like a Sentinel for a, um, a Space Marine. And that's a pretty good style line. He's six power, which means he's 120 points. We'll look at the points at the end of this, but he's not super expensive. And his guns are okay. He's got a Frag Storm Grenade Launcher. It's the same as the regular one on the, the other the other Big Dreddy. Uh, heavy Bolter, uh, which I love, because if you notice, it's mounted on his hip. It's a sidearm. He actually pulls it out and shoots it like a pistol, which makes me so happy. And there's a rule for that, too. Um, his Incendium Cannon, it's a it's a 12-inch range, heavy 2d6, uh, strength 5, minus 1, and uh, 1 damage. Remember, during the tactical turn, it's minus 2, and it's auto-hitting. So just 2d6 strength 5 hits that are minus 2 saved during the tactical doctrine is pretty awesome. And then an Iron Hail Heavy Starburst, so on the first turn, it's a heavy 3... 36 inch range, um, strength four, minus one, minus two during the tactical, oh, sorry, actually minus two during the first turn, during the Devastator Doctrine turn, uh, and then one. He's got the Angel of Death Rule, so he does get all that stuff. And then Twin Iron Hail, uh, which is 48 inch range, heavy six, and then strength seven, minus two during the first turn, damage two, and an Invector Fist, which is no minus to hit, but it's strength 14, uh, minus three, and then during the big turn, minus four, and three flat damage. He does have basically a Dreadnought Power Fist, which is pretty cool. Angel Death, he explodes. He does have concealed position, so you can set up anywhere in the battlefield that's more than nine for any models uh, and the enemy deployment zone. So that's pretty cool. It makes him pretty flexible for sitting spots. I mean, he's not the toughest boy in the world, but he's not super expensive either. And then heavy sidearm. Well, he's within one inch of any enemy units. The heavy bolter has a type characteristic of pistol three. He can shoot the heavy bolter in melee. It makes me so happy. It means during the assault phase too, he gets the assault doctrine on his pistol, so it's minus two save. So he, he effectively, during the shooting phase, if he's in melee, gets three additional attacks that shoot that are strength five minus three, one damage. I think it's super cool. Reavers, they're Reavers. Aggressors, Centurions, 
are still Centurions. Pikes and Assault Squads. Inceptors are still Inceptors. Suppressors. Uh, didn't get any options. They are just exactly as they are out of the Shadow Spear box. So nothing new and exciting for the Suppressor Squad. Uh, I was hoping they would let them ignore, but they don't ignore Moving Fire. They're still heavy too with their Accelerator Auto Cannons. I mean, they're minus three save in the first turn, which is pretty cool because with the, the, the Doctrine, but I don't know, man. They're pretty flimsy. <laughs> they're just, they're just you know, intercessors that can jump. And they can deep strike with grab shoots. They get smoke launchers once per battle. I just wish they'd had, I just wish they had something to offset the moving fire penalty because then they'd be a cool alternative to a land speeder, which also doesn't have anything to offset the penalty, but is slightly tougher. Uh, scout bikes, land speeders, because like you're getting plus one toughness and the same number of wounds on a land speeder that can move faster. It doesn't have as many guns, but it's also maybe not even as expensive. It's about four power for a land speeder. Well, that's four power. It's the exact same cost. Never mind. With less guns. Uh, attack bikes, devastators, centurion devastators, eliminators. All right, let's see their cool new guns. So they get an instigator bolt carbine. So this unit contains one eliminator sergeant and two eliminators. They're still on 40 mil basis, which I still find kind of weird. They're on character basis for primaris. They get a bolt pistol, bolt sniper rifle, and a camo cloak, and a pistol. Drag and crack. And then their options are, uh, every eliminator can take a las fusel or a bolt sniper rifle. Um, and the eliminator sergeant can be equipped with the following, a bolt sniper, an instigator bolt carbine, or a las fusel. Now the las fusels are 36 inch range, heavy one, strength eight, minus three, three damage. I don't know why you wouldn't just take those over the bolt carbine. The bolt sniper rifle is cool, but the las fusel is pretty baller. It's flat three damage and it's minus four save during the first round. So, and there's, and do they have the, the communicator? They don't. They have guided aim. Uh, if your sergeant doesn't shoot, you get plus one hit. And wound. So you're wounding, you're hitting on twos, wounding on twos at strength eight, minus four in the first round, flat three damage. And you ignore, do you ignore, um, is, is it also, it can target characters, yeah? No, wait, the last fusel can't. It doesn't have a sniper rule. So you can't pick out characters with the last fusel. Okay, well maybe maybe it's not quite as baller as I thought, but it's still gonna put a pile of damage on something. Uh, and it'll be hitting in, like on knight, it's strength eight, but plus one to wound if they do the guided aim. Until the end of the phase, resolving attack moving range up in the model in the unit, add plus one hit and wound. Yeah, so you hit on twos, wound on threes against the knight at minus four damage. So it would just get its um, involved. And you just plunk six damage down there. And they're only four power. They're not that expensive, so. I see a lot of Eliminator squads in the future <laughs> with the last Fiesels. Those are pretty great. Instigator Bull Carbine is the same as the normal one. Hellblasters are Hellblasters. Thunderfire Cannons are Thunderfire Cannons. Do people, do they even make that model anymore? And like, it was in, because it was metal and then it was um, fine cast. And I, I feel like they're getting rid of most of the fine cast stuff, so I don't even know if they make that model anymore. Thunderfire Cannons, still pretty good. Hunters, Stalkers, Swirlwinds, Predators, Vindicators, Land Raiders, Crusaders, Redeemers. Oh, Land Raider, I wish you were good still. You're too many points for what you do. You're such a cool model though, and you're such a classic Space Marine thing, but you're not great. Uh, Repulsor Executioners, here's the big lasery one. Heavy laser destroyer, the stats are the same as you've seen. Uh, model can be equipped with laser destroyer instead of a macro plasma, instead of one macro plasma incinerator, which is the same as the one on the big dread. Um, this model can be equipped with the Iron Hail Heavy Stubber and Icarus Rocket Pod. A Keelan Optics. In your movement phase, this model that does not move or moves a distance less than half. It can shoot with its Heavy Laser Destroyer twice in the following shooting phase. That's nice. I'll just fire my Heavy 2 Strength 10 minus 4 D6 twice. <laughs> and when you resolve damage, a 1 or 2 counts as a 3. So it always does at least 3 damage. Sure, why not? That sounds, that sounds legit. I mean, it is a bajillion points. 15 power. It's like a 300 point model. But it's also Strength Toughness 8. It's a Land Raider. It's, a, it's effectively a Land Raider for Primaris. So the Repulsor Executioner, it doesn't have a 2 plus save, which makes it slightly not a Land Raider, but it's Strength Toughness 8, 16 wounds, and has a baller gun. And can have a, like, I don't know why you take the Macro Plasma Incinerator when you can just shoot twice with the other one. I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to do it any other way. Yeah, Heavy Laser, I think I just, because it's Heavy D6 for the other one, right? So, I mean, you might spike high and get a whole bunch of shots, but... I'd rather just have four really, really, really good shots. <laughs> I could be wrong, though. And still transport six dudes. Uh, and then mark ten Gravis models count as two models. And cannot try and support jump back troops. Rhinos and Razorbacks. The venerable Rise of Rhino Razorback. Landspear Storms drop. Remember when Landspear Storm was the cool new thing? In 5th edition? 
<laughs> repulsors, and then the repulsor, the impulsor, sorry. I keep calling them all like variations of the repulsor, but they all look the same to me. Uh, this is the 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 <laughs> Toyota Celica of, <laughs> of of repulsor tanks. It's one more wound than a Rhino. It's basically a Rhino, strength up to seven, one uh, eleven wounds, fourteen inch move, a bit faster. A Bellicatus missile array. It's got a different bunch of guns. So it's Fragger Crack, which are basically just Fragger Crack missiles, and then Icarus missiles as well. So you can hit uh, plus one against folks who fly, minus one if it's not dodes who fly. And then a Frag Storm, Iron Hail Heavy Stubber, Iron Hail Sky Talon Array. Uh, and it just comes with two Storm Bolters. All these things are upgrades. Uh, heavy Six, Strength Four, Minus One, One, Shoots Against Fly, and then Storm Bolters. This model can be equipped with uh, one Iron Hail Heavy Stubber. So you can buy that on top of the two Storm Bolters. Oh, they're not Baby Hurricane Bolters. They're Storm Bolters on the doors. Interesting. They don't look like Storm Bolters, though. Like in the, in, it's interesting that it's a Storm Bolter because design-wise, it looks like something else. I'm used to a Storm Bolter really looking like a Storm Bolter because like, that was always the old trope in 40K was the STC meant that everything always looked like what it was, but they just kind of bolted it to stuff. In this, it's, it doesn't look like a Storm Bolter. It's just a, it looked like a two-barrel Hurricane Bolter. Um, Angel Death, sorry, it can be equipped with two Frag Storm Grenade Launchers instead of the two Storm Bolters. This model can have a Shield Dome or an Orbital Comms Array, or can be equipped with one of the following, a Bellicatus Missile Array or an Iron Hail Sky Talon Array. So you take the Missile Array or the Sky Talon Array, and then you can change out your um, Frag Storm Grenade Launcher for, for the two Storm Bolters. And it's got Angel Death, ho Hover Tank, distances are always measured to and from its hull. Repulsor field, if any with this ability is chosen as targets of a charge, subtract minus two from the charge roll. That's a pretty cool thing for a transport, minus two to charge. Because it means that at the very least you're not getting surrounded, so you can't get out of it. Assault vehicle, after this model moves in your movement phase, and this model did not advance, any units embarked uh, aboard it can disembark. Units that do not, ch uh, cannot be chosen to charge that turn. So that's pretty cool. Uh, after this model moves in your movement phase, and this model did not advance. They can't charge. It's weird that it's an assault vehicle, but they can't charge. <laughs> like, you think they could charge. I guess just to, like, move a whole bunch, jump out, rapid fire. Which, I mean, is a legit thing for Space Marines. Shield Dome, 4 plus Invol. 4 plus Invol on your Rhino is pretty cool. Uh, Orbital Comm Array. And sorry, it's not. It's more of a Razorback, actually, because it, it only carries 6 guys. Orbital Comms Array in your shooting phase. One model free army with an Orbital Comms Array that's not been used this battle can call in an Orbital Barrage. Um, if it does so, select one point in the battlefield and roll D6 for each unit within six, D6 inches of that point, subtracting one if they're a character on a 4 plus, take D3 mortal wounds. Okay, so you get an orbital barrage for every single one of these you take in your army. And they only do it once per game each, but uh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> just start, just start exploding. I, I wonder how long it's going to take somebody to try spamming that and just like dumpster mortal wounds on the people. Uh, in your shooting phase, one model from your army with an orbital comms array that's not been taken. So you only do it once per turn. So you can't just like dumpster six six of these things and, and do it a whole bunch. Because only one of them can do it. But yeah, it's pretty cool. Every turn you can just be dumping a orbital barrage on people. Uh, explodes. And that's it. Storm Mock Interceptor. Storm Raven Gunship. I was really hoping the Space Wolves could use the keyword here because it would mean that my Space Wolf Storm Raven I've had since the Storm Raven came out could actually be used finally. But it can't. Storm Talon Gunship. And then Armory of the Space Marines. As we've seen all this stuff before. Uh, flame weapons. Oh, interesting. So they define what bolt weapons, flame weapons, and melt weapons are for like special rules later on. And that's probably going to be really important when we're talking about later supplement books. Like I imagine flame weapons and melt weapons might be important for the salamanders. Um, bolt weapons, obviously, uh, things are actually, sorry, there's some things here that are actually defined too. So note that in the following weapons um, found in Codex supplements, these are bolt weapons. Blackout, Dorn's Arrow, Gauntlets of Ultramar, Gorgon's Wrath, and Quietus. So... So that gives us some some stuff. Blackout, I'm guessing, is maybe a Raven Guard relic. Dorn's Arrow, obviously, an Imperial Fists one. Gauntlets of Ultramar is going to be in the, the one you're going to see. Gorgon's Wrath is going to be an Iron Hands one. And Quietus, maybe that's the Raven Guard one. I don't know. That's pretty cool though, because um, that's obviously a whole bunch of uh, a whole bunch of spoilers on what's coming. And then Gauntlets of the Forge and Dracus for flame weapons, and that's it. So interestingly, there's some spoilers kind of hidden in there. All your weapons, which are no surprise to anybody. And war gear. And we're on to the legacy of the Primarchs. All right, so let's talk about building a Space Marine chapter, because that's where we're at now. So Space Marine units and data, uh, detachments. Um, 
A Space Marine in any Depths of Stardust unit that has one of the following keywords, uh, so Chapter, Ultramarines, Imperial Fists, Salamanders, White Scars, Raven Guard, Iron Hands, Crimson Fists, or Black Templars. Um, a Space Marine detachment is a Space Marine, uh, is a detachment that only includes Space Marine units. Note that Space Wolves, Blood Angels, Dark Angels, Death Watch, Grey Knights, Legion of the Damned deviate significantly and therefore cannot use any rules from the section, blah, blah. So, Space Marine detachment gains the following abilities. Defenders of Humanity, um, which is your battle secure or your objective secured, and then chapter tactics. Uh, if your army is battle forged, units from uh, the units other than servitors in the space marine detachment gain the chapter tactics ability, so long as every unit in the detachment is from the same chapter, and they depend on who you are. So chapter tactics for the eight chapters in here. I'm sorry, seven chapters in here, plus the Crimson Fists and the Black Templars. So sorry, six plus the Crimson Fists and Black Templars. So we've got six original OG first bounty chapters in here, and then of course, uh, the Dark Angels, Space Wolves, and Blood Angels get the, the cold shoulder. And then the Black Templars, the, the Imperial Fists get two buddies, two buddy chapters to show up with them, Templars and the Crimson Fists. So your chapter tactic for the, code, the Ultramarines, Codex Discipline, add one to the leadership characteristic of models in this, uh, with this tactic. Units with this tactic can shoot in a turn they fell back, but if they do so when resolving an attack made by a model in that unit in the shooting phase, subtract one from the hit roll. Uh, Imperial Fist Siege Masters. When resolving an attack made with a ranged weapon by a model with this tactic, the target does not receive the benefit of cover to its saving throw, and unmodified rolls of six give you additional hits. Uh, White Scars get Lightning Assault. Units that, uh, with this tactic can charge in the same turn that they advanced or fell back. Biker models with this tactic do not suffer the penalties for moving and firing heavy weapons or advancing and firing assault weapons. So, super speedy dudes. Raven Guard get Shadow Masters. When resolving an attack made with a ranged weapon against a unit with this tactic by a model that's more than 12 inches away, that unit is treated as having the benefit of cover to its saving throw. And if that unit is not a vehicle and is entirely on or within a train feature, subtract one from the hit roll. So they're not, not quite as baller as they were, but still pretty great. Um, and then Salamanders forged in battle. When you eat with this chapter, fire, uh, chapter tactic fires Overwatch or is chosen to shoot or fight. You can reroll a single hit roll and a single roll to wound. Um, when resolving an attack made with a weapon that has an armor penetration characteristic of minus one uh, against the unit with this tactic, the weapon is treated as having an armor penetration of zero. So you ignore the first um, minus one save. And then Iron Hands, the flush is weak. When a model of this tactic loses a wound on D6 and a six, it's not lost. When resolving Overwatch, they always hit on a five plus. In addition, a model with this tactic that has a damage table is considered to have double the number of remaining wounds, which is pretty great for dreads and stuff. And then Black Templars, Righteous Zeal. Uh, when a charge roll is made for you with this tactic, you can reroll any or all dice. In addition, when a model of this tactic loses a wound on a result, uh, as a result of a mortal wound on a d6 roll of 5 plus is not lost. Crimson Fists, no matter the odds, resolving attack made by a model with this tactic against a unit that contains at least 5 uh, more models. Uh, then the models, sorry, five more models than that model's unit add one of their hit rolls. For the purpose of this a tactic, a vehicle model with this tactic counts as five models. In addition, resolving an attack made with a, a bolt weapon by a model with this tactic, an unmodified roll of six scores additional hits. They always get an additional hit on a six. Successor chapter tactics. Let's talk about that. Uh, in the aftermath of the Horus Heresy, many chapters have been making their own stuff up. Pretty sure that's a red scorpion, maybe? If your chosen chapter does not have an associated chapter tactic on page 175, you must instead create their chapter tactic um, by selecting rules from the list here. Unless otherwise stated, your chapter has two successor tactics from the following list. So you, you get to pick two of these basically, uh, and there's piles of them. <laughs> so bolter fusillades, when resolving an attack made with a bolt weapon, real hit rolls of one. Born heroes, characters from this uh, army can heroically intervene within six and pile in six when they do so. Duelists, when resolving an attack made with a melee weapon by a model with this tactic against an infantry or biker unit, unmodified roll of six automatically scores a hit and successfully wounds. So you auto hit and wound on a six. That's bonkers. <laughs> um, but it's only against infantry or biker units. So you, you don't get it against like big, big toughness high things. Uh, and then you cannot select this target if you have the whirlwind of rage tactic. So if there's another tactic in here that also procs on a six, you, get, you don't get both. Fearsome Aspects, subtract one from the leadership characteristic of enemy units that are within three inches of any units from your army with this tactic. Hungry for Battle, when a unit with this tactic advances or makes a charge move, add one of the advance roll or charge roll. Indomitable, when a morale test is taken for a unit with this tactic, no more than one model can flee. Inheritors of the Primarch, if you select this uh, successor tactic, you cannot select a second one. Select one of the following chapters and use the chapter tactic for that chapter as listed on page 175. So you can you can basically make a sub chapter. So you can pick one of these and then an additional one. I don't know why you wouldn't always do that. 
um, if you're if it, if the in the background of your publications your chapter is a known successor, um, then you, if you select this successor tactic, you must select the chapter tactic of that first founding chapter. So like if I do a Raptors army for instance, I'd have to take Raven Guard, but then I'd still get one more of these, which is I feel like cherry picking, but but why wouldn't you? <laughs> like why wouldn't you do that? Um, Knowledge is power. Seems pretty Raven Guardy. When a Psychic Tester Deny the Witch test is taken for a Psyker model with this tactic, reroll any dice that are one. Long range marksman, add three to the range characteristic of range weapons. Um, models this tactic are equipped with. So like, so long range marksman. Long range marksman. So, so now all of my dudes with bolt rifles have a short range of 18 inches and they can rapid fire up to 33? Crazy. Sorry, it would be short range of... 33 divided by half, 15 and 16 and a half inches. Weird. <laughs> Master Artisans, when a unit from this tactic fires Overwatch or is chosen to shoot or fight with, you can reroll a single hit roll and uh, you can reroll a single wound roll. Uh, that seems really good on Laz Fusil Eliminators. Yeah. <laughs> just just reroll those failed dice. Just get two CPs with the rerolls for that unit every turn. Uh, preferred Enemy. When selecting this tactic, select one of the following faction keywords, Tyranid, Eldari, Orc, Heretic, Astartes, Necron, Tower Empire. Resolving an attack made with a melee weapon by a model in this, um, with this tactic against the unit from the faction keyword. In a turn in which the model made a charge move, charged or a hurdle can intervene, you can reroll the hit roll. So basically pick a, pick a, a prefer an enemy keyword and then, yeah, it's gonna be a funny one. Cause you take the tactic Select one of the. F I guess you'd have to make that part of your army list for like a tournament. You couldn't like change it dynamically round by round, because yeah, it's a that's a real good one otherwise. Rapid assault models of this tactic do not suffer the penalty for advancing and firing assault weapons. Um, Scions of the Forge models of this tactic that have a damage table are considered to have double the number of wounds remaining for the purpose of determining what row to use and what damage table. Stalwart, when resolving an attack made against a unit with this tactic, an unmodified wound roll of one or two always fails, regardless of any abilities the weapon or the model making the attack have. That's actually pretty cool. The, the best the, the army can be won on is a three plus. Stealthy, when resolving an attack made with a ranged weapon against a unit that's more than uh, 12 inches away, the treated as having benefit of cover. Stoic, add one to leadership characteristic of models of this tactic. Uh, yeah, you could do stealthy, you could do stealthy, um, what should we call it? Stealthy Salamanders and ignore minus one AP and also get plus one to your save over 12 inches. So I have like two plus save Salamanders. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> um, Stoic, add one of the leadership characteristic of models of this tactic. Tactical withdrawal, units with this tactic can charge in the turn they fell back. Warded, when this model uh, with this tactic would lose a wound as a result of a mortal wound. Roll a d6 and a five plus is ignored. And whirlwind of rage, when resolving an attack with a melee weapon uh, by a model of this tactic in a turn they charged, was charged or performed heroic intervention. An unmodified hit roll of six scores an additional hit. You cannot select this with the duelist tactic. So basically you can pick two of those to make a chapter or be a successor chapter and add one of these to your basic, uh, your, your home, home body chapter. And then we got warlord traits. Uh, Fear made manifest, subtract one from the leadership characteristic. Sorry, there's Space War Marine Warlord and then Vanguard Warlord. These are basically, the Vanguard Warlords I'm pretty sure are the same ones from Shadow Spear. Um, and then you get your chapter specific ones as well that you can take if you have a first founding chapter, one of the, the listed ones. So the Space Marine ones, Fear made manifest, uh, minus one leadership to enemy units within six of the Warlord. Imperium Sword, when a charge roll is made for this Warlord, you can reroll any or all of the dice. If in the charge phase this warlord made a charge mover performs a heroic intervention, add one of their strength and attacks. Arm resolve, add one of the wound characteristic for this warlord. Um, when this warlord would lose a wound on d6, uh, on a six, it's not lost. Champion of humanity, add one of the warlord's attack characteristic. Whilst there are any enemy characters within one inch of them, when resolving an attack made with a melee weapon by this warlord against a character unit, add one to the hit and wound roll. Uh, Storm of Fire, when resolving an attack made with a ranged weapon by a friendly chapter unit within six inches, uh, unmodified roll of six, on the um, hit roll of six, the arm penetration characteristic is improved by one, so you get better AP, again, on, on top of whatever you might get from like your, your current combat doctrine. And then Rites of War, this warlord has the Defenders of Humanity ability. Uh, when a morale test is taken for a friendly chapter unit within six inches, don't roll the dice, it's automatically passed. And then Shoot and Fade, uh, for Vanguard, at the start of the shooting phase, you may select one friendly chapter Phobos unit within six inches of the Warlord. Um, 
after shooting with that unit, it can move as if it were your movement phase. If it does, it must advance. It cannot declare a charge in the falling charge phase. Lord of Deceit, at the start of the first battle round, before the first turn, slept up to three friendly chapter Phobos units in the battlefield, remove them from the battlefield, and set them up again. Um, if both uh, units have this roll off. Master of the Vanguard, add one of the move characteristic of friendly chapter Phobos units within six of the Warlord, and add one of the advance rolls and charge rolls for Phobos units within six inches of the Warlord. Stealth Adept, when resolving attack against the Warlord, subtract one to hit. And then target priority, at the start of your shooting phase, select one friendly chapter Phobos unit within three inches of the Warlord until the end of the phase, when resolving an attack made with a ranged weapon by the model in the unit, add one to the hit roll. And then marksman armors, plus one damage to this ranged weapons, and doesn't uh, apply to grenades or relics. For your specific, uh, specific chapters, the Ultramarines get, while the Warlord's in the battlefield, you can roll 1d6 for each command point uh, that you spend on a 5+, plus, you get it refunded. Um, you can have one command point refunded per battle round by this uh, Warlord trait, so during your and your opponent's turn. Imperial Fists, when resolving attack with a melee weapon that has an arm penetration characteristic of minus one against a friendly Imperial Fist unit within six of the Warlord, and receiving the benefit of cover, add two to the saving throw instead of one, so plus two cover if you're within six of your Warlord, and something's got an AP of minus one. After this Warlord makes a charge move, you can select one enemy unit within one inch of this Warlord and roll a d6 and a 2 plus to take a mortal wound. That's White Scar's Deadly Hunter. Raven Guard, Silent Stalker. Uh, you can't fire Overwatch at the Warlord. Whoa! Welcome to Raven Guard Smash Captain Town. Holy moly, no Overwatch on the Raven Guard Smash Captains. I mean, the Blood Angel one's probably still better at fighting, but just not dying from Overwatch is, is pretty legit. Salamanders, plus two strength. So now you got a strength 12 smash captain if he's in a salamander. Um, Iron Hands, Merciless Logic. When resolving an attack made by this Warlord, you get a modified roll of six. Uh, you can make an additional attack against the same unit using the same weapon. This attack cannot generate another attack. Uh, Black Templar's Oath Keeper. This Warlord can perform a heroic intervention if there's enemy within six. Um, instead of three, and when they're doing so, it can move six instead of three. And then Crimson Fists refuse to die. The first time this roll is destroyed on a D6 roll of four plus, returns to play with D3 wounds remaining and placing them as close as possible to the previous position and more than one from enemy models. So he does the old uh, Pedro Cantor. Just too stubborn to die. And we're into stratagems now. And who oh boy, there's a bunch of them. Uh, Armor of Contempt, one CP, vehicles, five plus strike against mortal wounds. Uh, Auspex Scan, same as Suppression Fire, uh, same as Only Death is Duty Ends, uh, Shooter Fight in the Fight Phase, Chapter Master, same as before, two CPs, Death of the Traitors, one CP, uh, Unmodified, it's basically Death of the False Emperor for Heretic Astartes for you, uh, three pieces CPs to honor the chapter, use the strategy at the start of the fight phase, select Death of Astartes unit for your army, it's one inch, they fight additional time, um, Duty Eternal, that's at the end of the fight phase, sorry, not the start of the fight phase, we're on the chapter, they fight again. Uh, Duty Eternal, 1 CP, end of Sturdy's Dreadnought unit from your army's chosen target as attack until the end phase when resolving an attack, have the damage. So you can have the damage against Dreadnought, it's pretty cool. Flak Missile, same as before. Veteran Intercessors, 1 or 2. Um, it's 1 CP for 1 Intercessor Squad, or 1 Command Point for 1 Intercessor Squad from your... Uh, it can need 6 more models for 2. Add 1 to the attack and leash characteristic of models on that unit. Each Intercessor Squad can only be selected for the strategy once per battle. So if it's if it's ten dude, like if it's one to five guys, it's one CP. If it's uh, six to ten, it's two CPs, and they get plus one attack and leadership. So you get intercess three attack you know, intercessors with leadership eight. Bolt storm, and these are all just space marine stratagems, so anybody can use these. Uh, use strat the start of your shooting phase, select one intercessor squad uh, unit until the end of the phase. Auto bolt rifles that um, gain the following ability when resolving an attack made with this weapon against targets within half range. Not roll a hit, it automatically scores a hit. So your auto bolt rifles auto hit for two CPs within half range. Hunter Slayer Missile, select one repulsor from your army. Uh, to launch a Hunter Slayer Missile. Uh, roll 1d6, so it's equal to random mods both skill. Take d3 mortal wounds. Each repulsor can only do this once per battle. Cluster Mines for the skate bikes. Hellfire Shells, same as Gravitic Amplification, same as Masterful Marksmanship, Stern Guard, same as Rapid Fire. Use a strategy to start your shooting phase. Select one intercessor squad unit for your army until the end of that phase. Bolt rifles are rapid fire two instead of rapid fire one. Orbital bombardments for the Sturdy's Warlords, same as, but you can just buy them now instead of having them be three CPs. Uh, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> your tank does the orbital bombardment for free. So for every one of those like little baby um, 
repulsor chimeras or repulsor salamanders that you can buy now, you're basically getting a 3 CP stratagem that, that just happens. Relics of the chapter, 1 CP, the user additional relic. All the relics in your army include must be on different models. Hammer of Wrath for jump packs, five plus mortal wounds within one. Big guns never tire. In the shooting phase, a Stardis vehicle unit from your army is chosen to shoot. Until the end of the phase, they don't suffer the penalty for moving and firing. Fury of the first. Uh, Terminator unit until the end phase. When resolving attack made by a model in that unit, add one to the hit roll. So you get plus. That's pretty cool. So for one CP, you can offset the move and fire penalty for your heavy weapons if you turn, if you like, you deep strike in with your Terminators, and you're hitting on twos with like all your Stormbolters and stuff. I wish I had that on Death Watch. Oh my god. Uh, target sighted for three. Use strategy at the start of your shooting phase. Select an intercessor squad unit from your army until the end of the uh, phase. Stalker bolt rifles and the that models in that unit are equipped with gain the following. This weapon can target a character, um, and six six plus does mortal wounds in addition to any other damage. Tremor shells for your Thunderfire cannon, Wisdom of the Ancients, same as for the Dreadnought Skyfire for your Hunter Stalkers. Study Advance, uh, any Adept Studies Infantry unit for one CP for the purpose of the Bolter Spin ability, they count as remaining stationary. So you can auto stationary somebody for one CP. Skilled Riders, uh, two CPs. Use the stratagem in your movement phase. Select one Adeptus Astartes Biker unit or Adeptus Astartes Land Speeder unit. Um, if that unit moved um, in the same phase, then models then have a four plus invul against attacks made with ranged weapons until your next movement phase. If they advance, they get a three plus invul. Um, so, like, you get for two CPs, you give a unit of like our big Death Star of uh, White Scars a three plus invul save without any kind of like having to do anything. Because <laughs> you're always advancing because there's no penalty for doing it if you're White Scar. Here are the chapter. Use the stratagem uh, before the battle. After nominating your warlord, select one of the series character model for your army that's not your warlord and give them warlord trait. Transhuman physiology. Use this uh, for two CPs. Use the stratagem when an Adeptus Astartes unit from your army that's not a vehicle or a servitor is chosen as a target. Until the end of the phase, when resolving it, uh, an attack with that unit. Unmodified wound roll of one to three always fails. So for two CPs, your sitting duck unit can only be ever be wounded at best on a four plus. And it's anything that's not a vehicle or a servitor. That's bonkers. So you can just plunk somebody down the middle of like a bajillion strength eight guns, and the best thing can move on is four plus for two CPs. Crazy. Uh, Vengeance of the Machine Spirits. Uh, use a stratagem when a Depths of Stardis Land Raider, Repulsor, or Sturm Raven gunship is destroyed. Um, that model can either um, automatically explode for two CPs. <laughs> oh my god. Shoot with one of its range weapons if it was the shooting phase or attacking the melee weapon. Uh, and use the top row for the damage table when determining the, the attack for the melee weapon or shooting weapon. Crazy. Tactical flexibility, 1 CP. Use a stratagem at the start of your movement phase. Select any number of Adeptus Astartes units from your army that have the combat squad ability and contain 10 models. Each of those units is divided into two units of five models. Any rule uh, effects that apply to a unit from the stratagem. Can, so you can just, you can basically divide up if you need to mid-game. Adapt strategy. Um, use stratagem at the start of the battle round if there's any chapter characters uh, from your army on the battlefield before the ch you change which combat doctrine is active. If the assault doctrine is currently active, you can change it back to the tactical doctrine. Yeah, alternatively, if the, if the tactical doctrine is active, you can turn it back to the devastator. So for one CP, you can go backwards basically up the chart for your doctrines. And then one CP for Gene Rot Might. Use the stratagem in the fight phase or when a Primaris infantry unit from your army is chosen to fight until the end of that phase and resolving an attack made with a melee weapon by a model in that unit, an unmodified hit roll of six automatically scores a hit and successfully wounds a target. Don't make a wound roll. Pretty cool for one CP. So there's all your strats that are generic to all Space Marine chapters. And then we're into the generic chapter relics that once again, everybody can use. And we've got two other little bits and pieces. So, uh, chapter relics, the armor Indominus, infantry model or biker model only, a model with this relic has a save of two plus. Uh, in addition, once per battle before making a saving throw for that model, you can choose to activate its force field. If you do, it has a three plus invul until the end of the turn. So you can, you can hulk out one turn. The shield eternal, model with a storm shield or combat shield. This relic replaces the storm shield or combat shield. A model with this relic has a three plus invul. In addition, uh, five plus wound short against wo uh, mortal wounds or wounds. Standard of the Emperor Ascendant, an ancient model with the Astartes banner only. I do like that they've, they've, they've got a whole bunch of um, uh, like replace weapon stuff in here. Add three inch the range of the model's Astartes banner ability. When a model tests for, uh, when a morale test is taken for a friendly chapter unit within nine inch of that model, do not roll a die, it automatically passes. In addition, subtract one from leadership characteristic of enemy within nine inch of the model. Teeth of Terra, I think it's the same as before. 
Replace the chain sword, plus one strength, minus two, two damage. And then when the sparrow fights, make three additional attacks. It's a pretty cool chain sword. Um, Primarch's Wrath, uh, bolt gun or mastercraft bolt gun only. Um, and it's 24 inch range, rapid fire two, strength five, minus one, two damage. So remember, this is all like minus two save all of a sudden in the tactical doctrine. Burning Blades, um, plays a power sword or mastercraft power sword. Um, it is plus three strength, minus five, two damage. Oh my god, that's pretty great. Uh, minus six save if you're in the Assault Doctrine. Not that you really need to. The Burning Blade is great. Uh, Purgatorus replaces a Bolt Pistol, Heavy Bolt Pistol. Uh, pistol two, strength five, minus three, two damage. Reliquary of Gathalmor, a Primaris model only. When a uh, Psychic Test is taken for an enemy model within 18 inches of this model, uh, with this relic, subtract one from the test. In addition, when a psych test is failed for an enemy within 18 inches on a 4 plus, they take D3 mortal wounds. Bellicose Bolt Rifle replaces a Mastercrafted Bolt Rifle, Auto Bolt Rifle only. Um, and it's Assault 4, Strength 5, Minus 1, 2 damage. Lament, uh, model equipped with a Mastercrafted Stalker Bolt Rifle only. It's Heavy 1, Strength 5, Minus 2, 3 damage. When resolving an attack with this weapon, a successful wound inflicts one mortal wound. And it, it's just always just a mortal wound, in addition to the normal damage. Ghost Weave Cloak, it's a Phobos model with a camo cloak only. When resolving an attack made by a model with this weapon, subtract one from the wound roll. The Tome of Malkador, the Sigilite, uh, it's a librarian model only. A model with this relic knows an additional psychic power. Uh, Benediction of Fury, Chaplain model only. This relic replaces the Croce's Arcanum. It's a um, plus two strength, minus two, three damage. When resolving an attack made with his weapon, an unmodified wound roll of six does a mortal wound in addition to all other damage. The Honor Vehement, uh, friendly chapter units are treated as not having the shock assault ability with a, are, as not having the shock assault ability whilst within six inches of model with your army with this relic. Instead, add one of the attack characteristic of, oh, you just always get plus one attack. <laughs> so instead of getting on the charge, uh, heroic intervention or when charge, you just always have an extra attack. And then the Vox Espiritum, Primaris model only. If model uh, has this relic, add three inches to the range of its aura abilities, including like rights of battle. This does not increase the range of psych powers or litanies of battle that are aura abilities. The Librarius Discipline. Um, so Space Marine Librarians are wise and can have all these great things like Veil of Time, uh, Mighty Heroes. It's all the same. <laughs> Uh, Veil of Time manifests on six uh, until the start of the next psych phase when an advanced roll or charge roll is made for this unit. You can roll the dice. In addition, the unit always fights first in the fight phase. Mighty Heroes add one of the strength, toughness, and attacks characteristic of a single chapter for model within 12 until the next psychic phase. Null Zone, warp charge of seven. Uh, psych invulnerable saves cannot be made by enemy units within six of the psyker. And when a psych test is taken within six of the psyker, you have the result. Psychic so Scourge, Warp Charge 6, D6 plus Leadership versus the unit. If you're higher than your opponent, take D3 Mortal Wounds. If equal, take one Mortal Wound, and if it's less, nothing happens. Fear of the Ancients on a 7. Um, if manifested, select one enemy unit within 12 and draw a line. Uh, the selected models in the unit uh, and each other enemy unit that has, is along this line take a Mortal Wound. Psychic Fortress, Psychic Fortress is a warp charge value of five. If manifested, select one Adeptus Astartes unit within 18. Until the end of the next Psychic phase, and when a Moraltus is taken, it's automatically passed. In addition, when a model in this unit would lose a wound as a result of a mortal wound in the Psychic phase, on a four plus, it's not, not lost. So no, no taken wounds uh, from Psychic powers on a four plus. Mm. There we go. And then we get the Os Obscuration Discipline. So this is the Phobos stuff. Shrouding, uh, has a warp charge of six. And if manifested, select a friendly Phobos unit within 18. Until starting next psychic phase, enemy models can only shoot that unit if they're the closest visible to them or they're firing overwatch. Soul Sight, uh, chapter, uh, charge of six. Friendly Phobos unit within 18. Until the start of your next psychic phase, when resolving an attack made by a ranged weapon, you can reroll hit roll and you don't get any cover. Mind Raid. Um, warp charge six. Enemy model within 18. That model suffers a mortal wound. If your army's battle forge and that model is a character, roll 3d6. If the result's equal to or greater than the model's leadership, you gain a command point because you, you steal stuff from their brain. Hallucination. Warp charge six. Select an enemy unit within 18, invisible. Until the start of your next psychic phase, subtract one from leadership characteristic of models in the unit. Your opponent then rolls 2d6. If 
um, the result is greater than the highest leadership characteristic of models in that unit, then until the start of your next psychic phase, when resolving an attack made by a model in that unit, they're minus one to hit. Tenebris Curse, uh, on a six, select uh, one enemy unit that cannot fly, and is within 18, they take a mortal wound, until the start of your next psychic phase, have their move characteristic, and result of any advance and charge rolls. Temporal Corridor, uh, Warp Charge 7, select one friendly Phobos unit within three inches of the Psyker. That unit can immediately move as if it was your movement phase, but it cannot fall back as part of the move and must advance. When the advance roll is made, roll 3d6 and discard two of the results. You cannot use Temporal Corridor in the same unit more than once per psychic phase. You only use it on the once. Litanies of Battles, this is pretty cool. So before the battle, generate the litanies of a chapter chaplain model that knows litanies of battle uh, below. You can either roll a d6 or choose. Um, and you can select the litanies that the model knows. So you've got Litany of Faith. If this litany is inspiring, then a model, uh, and these go off on a three plus. So I should have actually, I, I didn't even notice that actually my first time through. Let's just see what it actually takes to cast a, um, a, a chaplain's thing. I think it's just like a prayer in Age of Sigmar. It's a three plus, they get, they get it. A chaplain knows a litany of faith and a lot of three plus goes off. That's right. And then Litany of Hate, if the Litany is inspiring, you can reroll hit rolls. So the, the old Litany of Hate is one that they all have. And it's if it's inspiring, you can reroll hit rolls. For attacks made with melee weapons by models in this um, in friendly chapter units within six of the model. So basically, you have to get a three plus to get the rerolls now. Um, and they also know the Litany's of Battle. So Litany of Faith, um, friendly chapter units within six inches of this model would lose a wound uh, as a result of a mortal wound on a five plus ignored. It's not cumulative of the rules. Catechism of Fire, if this litany is inspiring, select one friendly chapter unit uh, within six. Resolving attack with a ranged weapon. Uh, against the unit closest unit visible, add one to the wound roll. So the closest unit visible gets plus one to wound. Pretty cool. Exhortation of Rage, if this litany is inspiring, select a friendly chapter unit within six inches of the model. When resolving an attack made with a melee weapon, uh, unmodified six, you can make one additional attack. And this does not, you get, you get Death of the False Emperor, basically. Mantra of Strength, if this litany is inspiring, add one of the model's attack and strength characteristics and add one of the damage characteristic of melee weapons this model is equipped with. Holy moly. So he hulks out. Uh, recitate, recitation of Focus, if this litany is inspiring, it's like one friendly chapter unit within six inches of this model. When resolving an attack made with a ranged weapon by a model in that unit, add one of the hit roll. Um, and then Canticle of Hate. If this litany is inspiring, add two to the charge rolls made for friendly chapter units within six. Uh, in addition, when a friendly chapter unit makes a pile in or consolidate move within six, most likely it can move to an additional three inches. So you get a six inch pile in. It's not cumulative with any other abilities that increase their charge roll or increase their consolidator pile in. So that's pretty cool. They added some value to chaplains because chaplains, I mean, it's not like they didn't feel like chaplains, but they kind of just did one thing. They hit okay and a nearby unit could, could fight better. Uh, so you get some options now. I like there's a reason to take a chop one with a shooting unit now. You can actually like make their shooting slightly better or you can hulk him up and actually make him a much more decent fighter than he is normally. And then point values. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on these. Um, I will look at the new units for the most part. These may change again going into the new chapter proofed, but they may not as well. Um, but yeah, let's look at the new stuff. So the new Incursor, he's going to be 19 points, including war, not including War Gear. Infiltrator's still 22, 32 for the Adept Helix, which is really expensive. Intercessor 17, Scouts are 11, Tactical Marines are 12. The Impulsor is 75 points base, not including War Gear. Uh, we've got the... Who else is new in here? The Invictor Tactical Warsuit's 90 points base. And then I think that's it. Suppressors are still 18, Inceptors are still 25. Uh, all your space trucks are pretty much the same points. This could have changed. I'm, I'm not going to be able to pick it out on the fly, so I'm just going to hold the book open and you guys can look and tell me. And if you're a rabid Space Marine player, then you're going to know. And if not, you're not. Um, I will look at how much the new... Repulsor t-shirts, it's 215, not including its guns. So it's gonna be pretty spendy when you start throwing guns on there. Because it has the super laser gun. Where is it? Not the onslaught gatling cannon. It's like a laser destroyer, something laser destroyer. Macro plasma centers are 31. Where's the super laser destroyer? I they all have like names. <laughs> Heavy laser destroyer is 40, so it's like mm, 255 plus other guns. 
It's going to be pretty spendy. It's going to be about a 300 point tank. And then tactical objectives, and that's it. We are done our look through of the Angels of Death, the new Space Marine Codex. So if you want to check out the reviews, um, which I'm sure will be much shorter on the White Scars and the Ultramarines, they will be linked up in the um, cards over here and in the video description so you can see them. Uh, I am pretty excited about this because they are getting to make books for chapters who've legitimately never had books. This one is really exciting. The White Scars, um, which I'll talk about more in that review, they've never had their own codex in the history of Games Workshop's writing about them. This is a big deal for White Scars players. Um, much like it's going to be a big deal for, I imagine, everybody who is on that list. So uh, with 10 books, I'm, I'm thinking that, that everybody that got Chapter Tactics is getting a book. So Templars, Crimson Fists, that's pretty cool. Uh, maybe I'll paint an RTBO one Crimson Fist like R Rogue Trader Army and just base them all on 32s. They look really weird on 32s. Just to like, just to, like to have that army and also have it be playable in 40k. Um, but yeah, no, like the Raven Guard, the White Scars, the Salamanders, the Iron Hands, they had their they had rules in the Codex, but they never got their own book. So that's pretty exciting. So yeah, so um, I, I think this is a cool new way to get more if you're a really cool fan of a chapter. I think there's enough in here too that you could play the chapters. I mean, you're going to have the rules for all your special characters and stuff. If you just want to put it in the Space Marine Codex, you can as well. So I always thought that this was a cool way of doing it because it let you focus more on the chapters that didn't get a lot of love and kind of give them some more cool new stuff. Um, now, the last time Workshop did this, there was a big, like, why am I buying another codex to just get X number of rules? Sort of, like, outcry. But then as soon as they started doing books like this, it was, why don't I get more stuff for my... Like, it was a seesaw between the big, giant second edition codexes that had, like, a ton of stuff in them and these, like, slimmed down codexes. I think these are a really good compromise because they're not little. There's a lot here. There's, like, 65 pages of stuff for each of these little codexes. They feel like a big book in their own right, and they do let the the writers and the rules designers just give you more. Like, so so this is the template, the Space Marine Codex. These are going to give you some more. Let's check them out in the next video. Um, and if you don't have time to watch that today, I'll, you can check it out tomorrow. But it's all going up right now. So either click the link above, right up here, or down below in the, the actual like, description of the video. And we'll see you for the next one. I um, hope you enjoyed this review and flip through of Codex Space Marines 2019. Until next time, Ash, how are you? I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below so you get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Death Ray Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.